Hi, I'm Bob Hoagland, Senior Faculty Member for the William Glasser Institute and President of Bob Hoagland Incorporated. The following clip was filmed at Loyola Marymount University in 2007. This is one of a series of clips to introduce a choice theory or reality therapy concept or application. For more information, please visit my website, bobhoagland.com, where you can sign up for monthly thoughts, tips, and quotes, find out about training opportunities, download some podcasts or articles, or find out other valuable information. Choice theory as we know is nothing more than a theory of how and why we behave. It's based on the whole idea of internal motivation. Do you know anybody in the world who has ever said I was externally motivated to go to the grocery store? And my own students would tell me all the time, people make them do things and all of that. And I'll tell you a few stories on that in just a second. But it's also based on choice. Now I taught the self I taught the self capped high school kids. I had in essence the worst out of 4,000 students at my particular high school. They fed two schools into my program. The majority of them would come into my class and they'd say, I have to come to school. And I'd say, why do you have to come to school? And they'd say, because my PO says I have to. Well, what if your probation officer says you have to come to school? Yeah. Well, so does everybody that's on probation go to school? Well, no. So, well, then aren't you voting with your feet that my class is better than the risk of jail? Now, when they'd hear that, some of them thought they would rather have chosen jail than I'm knowing I'm going to talk to them about choices and individual responsibility and all of that. But the bottom line is we do this all the time. We make a choice. Now, I do want to add one piece here. When I talk about choice, I always like to make it clear. We always have a choice in any situation. We don't always have a good choice in every situation. Both of my parents have passed away. When my father passed away first, I didn't have a choice in whether he died or not. What was my choice? My choice was in how I dealt with him and his death. Every one of the four of us kids dealt with it differently. Now, is that something I would have woken up in the morning and said, oh boy, I hope my dad can die today? Of course not. But it doesn't mean that I still don't have the responsibility and the ability to say, how do I want to deal with my particular life or my particular situation? Well, I think the more we can help a student learn that, the healthier and happier they are. You do have choices. And out of context, this story may sound a little bit um, strange or, or maybe even cold, but I had worked with this particular student for about seven months, and he was very used to me asking him questions. He was very used to me talking to him about what his options and choices were. So like all good teachers, he starts acting up after a while. And he had been doing phenomenally well, for at least for two or three months. He's talking about possibly getting out of special education for the first time since third grade. He's motivated to do all of that. And all of a sudden, he starts acting up. And his, his language is getting more and more aggressive. He's not hitting anybody again yet, but you can just tell it's coming. So like all good teachers, I said, I'll talk to him tomorrow. Well, tomorrow came and went, and of course, I was too busy for that. And the third day came, and one of the other students came up and said, Mr. Hoagland, Ray's parents are getting a divorce. Well, that's new information. And it was amazing with that new information how I became more responsible because I found time to talk to him. So I said, Ray, what's going on? And he said, well, yeah, my parents are getting a divorce and all that kind of thing. And I said this to him, and, and again, we had a school counselor, and he did go talk to the school counselor. I'm not trying to minimize the grief of a breakup or anything like that. But I said, Ray, is it a done deal that your parents are going to get a divorce? And he said, yes. And I said, well, let's put it this way. Do you still want to have a good relationship with your mom? Well, yeah, of course. Do you still want to have a good relationship with your dad? Well, yeah, of course. So can you tell me how screwing up everything in school is helping you get along better with them? How is it going to help your relationship? And he just kind of sat there and says, oh, it's not. Now, I'm not going to just leave him there. And I said, but Ray, where do you have the most control over what happens at home or what happens here at school? Oh, here at school. 
Okay, so do you think if you continue to work on school and get that back to where you were happy, you'd be better able to deal with the crap at home? And he says, well, yeah. And believe it or not, and I'm, I'm not crediting the one conversation, it was seven months of conversations. He was an entirely different student immediately. He did go talk to the school counselor a couple of times, but it's helping people understand he's not going to get exactly what he wants, but can he get the next best thing? What is in his control? Yes, he can have good relationships with each of his parents individually. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the clip.